Welcome back. Uh, it's uh, time for uh, Off the Press, of course, where we look at what the papers have this morning. I'd like to say uh, welcome to our guest analyst. Uh, he's always here at least once every week, uh, architect Ezekiel Inyaituk. Good morning to you, sir, and thank you, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to be with you here. All right, all right, same here. Let's go straight to the first paper. The Nation newspaper has some interesting uh, uh, headlines. Uh, I've been looking for uh, Ndukok Bagbena's name somewhere, but I didn't see it. Uh, so we start with the big one. Um, hiccups in PVC distribution. Uh, prospective voters besiege centers. We're addressing challenges. There's a picture of um, Moria Koub, who is the um, the uh, chairman of the, for, of the Independent National Electoral Commission. More from the nation. Uh, again, Obagbina lies without shame. Okay, that's the name uh, right there because I was looking for it. I think my, my lenses played a trick on me. Again, Obagbina lies without shame. Manufacturers or alternate own alternate reality uh, is what they are saying. So that's the latest in the back and forth between uh, the APC presidential campaign team and uh, Tinubu's um, media armory or media organizations and uh, Arise TV and This Day and their chairman uh, on the other side. All right, uh, more from the nation. Senate to CBN adjust cash withdrawal limit. Adjust cash withdrawal limit. How much do they want them to make it? Uh, federal government okays whistleblower bill to strengthen anti-graft war federal government okays whistleblower bail to strengthen anti-graft war banks roll out redesign narrow notes today i can't wait to get my hands on them jam remits 50 billion naira to federal government efcc okays 9.24 billion naira life insurance cover for public servants a huge crowd receives tenable in mina the paper didn't add the other one Huge crowd receives Tinubu in Mina. Maybe you can find the other one on uh, page three. I know I, I know our guest knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, over to the punch. Banks reconfigure ATMs. New Naira enters circulation today. Bank officials complain of small allocations from CBN. It may fail to appear before reps over withdrawal limits. Hmm. And more from the punch. Uh, 2023, INEC. Uh, budgets, uh, budgets rather, 117 billion naira for anti-hacking software others, right? Uh, P and ID, Nigeria's failed contract debt hits 5 trillion. That's that thing still on. FG approves new whistleblower bill, cancels tax holiday. NNPC, price slash, fails to end fuel queues. My oh my. World Cup, brave Morocco bow. To France, Kuri Ratabiola's children, UFG, demand $10 million. And federal government opens second Niger Bridge warns against speeding. Uh, the story is on the front page of the punch. Very quickly, over to Daily Trust. Stop begging West for loans. Ghana president tells African leaders. Stop begging West for loans. Ghana president tells African leaders. Uh, he just signed a bill with I, a deal with IMF. I don't know if that is part of what he's talking about. Buhari seeks U.S. support for $1.9 trillion energy plans. Uh, Nigeria's foreign debt hits $40.06 billion. Ghana seeks $3 billion from IMF. Uh, so what is the Ghanaian president talking about? Uh, <laughs> African leaders borrow to fund wasteful, wasteful ventures. Analysts, African leaders borrow to fund wasteful ventures. More from Daily Trust. Senate orders CBN to increase cash withdrawal limits. New Naira notes go into circulation today. I uh, don't know who is going to win that battle. I guess I guess to tell us more and give us his thoughts on that. Let's move over to the Guardian newspaper. 80 billion Naira USSD debts. Uh, weaken digital channels as new Naira notes arrive. U.S. partnership with Africa key to world success, says Biden. I guess for, that's coming on the heels of the African, U.S.-Africa summit that is um, uh, currently holding. Nigeria's elite stole 16.25 trillion naira oil in 12 years, says Naiti. <laughs> NCC raises the alarm as malware attacks over 300,000 devices, as some of the stories 
on the front page of the Guardian. At this point, we would uh, uh, come over to you, Ezekiel and Yaitu. Thank you very much for your time once again. Let's start with um, the the big one there, the uh, new Naira notes entering circulation today. Uh, we'll go to the ATM machine, um, or the ATM rather, uh, immediately we're done with this show uh, just to see what I'll get one. And um, what are your thoughts on this? Because um, according to the punch, the bank officials or the banks are complaining of small allocations. Um, and that's on one side. The cash withdrawal limits is the second policy uh, by the CBN. And the, uh, uh, the, the, the chairman, uh, the governor of the CBN is, is appearing before the, uh, the House of Reps over the withdrawal limit. We're hearing also from the Daily Trust newspaper that uh, the Senate is ordering the CBN to increase their withdrawal limits, which I don't know if they have the power to do that. So over to you. Let's start with those stories from the Punch newspaper. Okay. Um, <clears throat> number one, the National Assembly has um, the power to express an opinion on any issue um, that they feel is not in the best national interest. So within the context of um, power to um, express an opinion, I think they have the power. The problem would be if they have the powers to enforce an opinion. Uh, that's a different thing. But I have been one of the cheerleaders, one of those that's been extremely excited about this new note stuff, you know, because, um, you know, there are a lot of fundamental problems that we have with this country. And it goes to the root of government and governance and corruption. And by the time you have a dog, that dog is made to bark. When you have a cat, that cat is programmed by nature to meow. So you have to ask yourself, are you having a dog or are you having a back? As people seek public office, you must interrogate who they are. If they are dogs, they are going to be barking all the way. If they are cats, they are going to be meowing all the way. Why do I say this? It is that Monday, a political process, which is where you choose the leadership where you choose the control over the country has been so over monetized that anything that could be done to bring down that influence is in the best national interest and right now this policy is as one who is contesting i can tell you that is one of the best policies that i've seen in this country because politicians got to know that this vote buying they've got to do a lot of work they had stashed up a lot of money, you know, just for this, because they had come to, you know, weaponize, you know, that poverty. The people are poor, no matter what you say, they don't want to listen to you on election day, all they want to see is cash. And that is, I don't know how many of us think of the larger implication of such nonsense. So the cash policy, to me, is very good. The only thing is that you know, as one who has funded a lot of young people that are doing the, the, um, the POS business, a lot of times they are, I think they are going to have a lot of challenges with the amount of money that they can hold at a time that they can withdraw. So all that, you know, 200, you know, they need to give a more, a more workable, you know, withdrawal limit, you know, uh, per day. You know, the, 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 their transaction limit is usually within that 100, 200,000, you know, daily. And you, unless you want to think of somebody who goes to withdraw 200,000 every day, every day, every day, and keeps, you know, for, for election. But all said, I, I think that um, it's a good policy. They may need to tweak it a little bit here and there, but let the end game be that they make it difficult to for it there to be that um, liquidity during elections, and um, I, I think that is a worthwhile policy. All right. So uh, I think basically you're saying that uh, the the Senate doesn't have the powers to order uh, the CBN to increase the cash withdrawal limits. If that's what you're saying. No, no, no. I don't. I don't think they have the power to order. I think they have the power to express a strong opinion, and the Senate is important enough for any strong opinion to be seriously considered. All right, all right. Let's um, let's stay with the Punch newspaper and uh, some of the uh, the headlines coming from the Punch newspaper. Uh, we have NNPC price slash fails to end fuel 
uh, cues. Uh, do not know if this will be should be considered a blunder, a blunder by the the um, NNPCL as they are now called. The cues are still persisting, even with um, the uh, the threat by the. State Department of State Security Services. Its queues are still persisting, though they've reduced a bit. But in Lagos, we have queues still uh, on some routes. You know, the, the issue of queues and fuel scarcity and that cycle and that usually comes at yell tide time and one wonders what has really changed in the system to make this you know, perennial, consistent, you know, scarcity during the particularly Christmas season. I think that a government will come one day that will resolve these issues. For now, a lot of people, governance is about profiteering. A lot of people are just looking for where they make money. And um, if they want to remove fuel subsidy, they should just come clean on it. But all this, but I really don't think it has to do so much with um, removal of fuel subsidy because I mean, it's almost a constant thing during Christmas, and they don't increase price every Christmas, you know? So I think that there's still that element of insincerity with government where you really don't know what the policy is, where we are going as a people. I don't really know why the scarcity is. And as concerning EFCC, you know, EFCC, you don't need to issue you see, certain threats. It's true that you are in for national security and fuel cues. You don't need to tell anybody, you know, in a time that you can have uh, where there are people who are gathered, it's always a soft target. And while certain things are inevitable, the fuel station becomes worse because, I mean, think in terms of what is there, how inflammable. It's different from like a market where whatever happens is located or uh, confined to the, the bomb, let me just be very clear on it. But in a fuel station, I mean, the, the damage would be, would, be, would be inconceivable. So what do you do? You make sure that at such places, people just have, make it as discouraging as possible, where you just have a few people run in, buy their fuel and go. So to that extent, it's actually a major risk to us as a nation. So, but what EFCC could do is just, Pick up certain facts, certain intel, and then get about the prosecution. When they know that you are getting this done, one, two, three, you don't need to announce it. You don't need to talk about it. There are, there are, there are many ways of killing a rat. When you come to announce it, it becomes like sensational stuff. And people are like, maybe they just want to come and then get settled and then they, they, they leave. So for me, I think that backing could have a bite, you know, if they are serious about it. All right, very interesting indeed. Uh, looking for not just the back, but also the bite, uh, and quite a number of people out there who share your views as well. Let, let's go over to uh, move on from the Punch newspaper to the Nation. Um, the the PVC distribution has been a uh, issue of um, a lot of attention, of course, for various reasons. And the paper is saying that from its findings, here, uh, hiccups in PVC distribution. I don't know if you faced. Anything, maybe if you, you know people who face such uh, challenges. But um, as a media practitioner in my programs, I've, I've had several people call to complain about uh, the difficulties they're having. I mean, but let's even leave aside the attacks, you know, on facilities in parts of the country. So, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I want you to add that to that uh, uh, story on the front page of The Punch uh, regarding INEC uh, saying they're setting aside 117 billion naira um, for uh, anti hacking software which I think is a very big concern, uh, looking at what they're doing with the technology and elections next year. Okay, two things. The very first is that as one who is interested in the election, you would expect me to be more interested in the PVC collection and all that. You see, there are two things about the PVC that I would like people to know. The very first thing is that anybody that, you know, there's an aspect you didn't add, I think it's one of the papers where they say, uh, millions of PVCs go for less than 2,000 Naira in certain parts of the country. You know, they are all connected. You see, what is happening is this. If you have somebody's PVC, is as useless as anything. But that's where people make a mistake. What politicians are doing 
is they look for your stronghold and they go to mop up the PVCs. They don't expect to benefit from it. All they want to ensure is that when people go out to vote in your stronghold, fewer people can vote because their PVCs have been collected from them. And now one says, if you look into, without your PVC, if you look into the register and then you see your name, you can vote. I don't think that's possible. I think you cannot vote except you have your PVC. Your PVC is what calls up your data and not that somebody will see your name and start to manually look for it. So I think that um, the EFCC again and the police should look into this issue of people buying. Let that intel be now, now, now. And then you can now, there's a way you can blow it out. You know, let one, two, three. That's why I like Mr. Mikey Guinea when he was here. He actually targeted one, two people, got them prosecuted, got them to the point of conviction. That is sincerity of purpose. That seriousness. But a lot of all these things we are doing is just, you know, playing to the gallery, you know, is grandstanding and seeking cheap publicity. Now, that said, when you talk of the challenges that people are having in getting the PVC, you know, like that preliminary time, there are two sets of people. There's a set of people that are technology savvy and they are not a few, you know. Those people, you should be able to be able to track and go to where your PVCs are, and INEC should be on top of the situation to make sure that the distribution is very orderly. It's a very simple thing. You know, the stacking. You can stack according to alphabetical order. You can you stack according to your local government. You can stack according to the unit so that you can retrieve any... What INEC should target is retrieving any PVC within one minute. They can do that. That is the program they should be on right now. How can I retrieve any PVC within one minute? Question number one, what's your name? What's your word? Exactly the way it is, you know, your, your sleep, you know? And then if I know, I know that um, word, you know, say local government, this particular local government, it's just like a library stacking. Local government library, um, uh, local government, um, a particular local government is here. And in those local government, there are five, ten wards. The, your particular ward, ward four, is here. In the wards, there are number of villages. Your particular village is here. And then goes to your, you know, polling unit. It is here. And then, because now it's going to be limited, what your... Uh, alphabetical, uh, what's your name? My name is Nyaitok, surname, that's N. So you just go to under N. In less than a minute, you brought my PVC one at a time, you give a person, he signs off, he goes, and you're cool. So I think that um, that that process, I next should look at it again, instead of that, you know, once something is um, either here or there, check this one, check the other one, check this one, check the and mix up, you, you it is, it's going to be terrible. So that library stacking and that mindset and approach is what INEC should have been doing long before now. Uh, once they do that, I think it becomes uh, easier. And right now, you know, we normally have two seasons. When it starts, a few people go, then they relax. But then when it gets towards the end, you see that surge, you see that desperation, you see that confusion. And I hope INEC is proactive and looks for very, very ingenious ways of getting the PVCs distributed seamlessly. And that's the word, seamlessly. All right. Um, uh, interesting. Very interesting, Lida. I think you've given us a practical, you know, observation. Maybe I next should pay you for consultation. <laughs> so, so see. And they give me my 10%. All right. Um, so let's look at the stay with the nation issue. Please don't get me wrong. Not as if I won't like the money for my campaign. I sure will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's um let's uh let's let's look at the stay with the nation newspaper. There's a big there's a picture on the front page, of course. Huge crowd receives Sinibu in Mina, uh, which is uh it tells a part of the story. But of course, um, the, the, what what has grabbed the headlines is not the crowd, but the fact that uh, Bola Ametinibu left uh, the the rally early. Uh, like I said, that's that's in front of the 
Nation newspaper. Huge crowd, um, huge crowd received Tinubu in MENA. They have the story on page two, I believe, or page three, rather, of the paper. I do not know if uh, we can agree, uh, architect, with me, that uh, the, what stole the headlines is the fact that the man rushed off state, state, state. Now, some reports are citing the APC presidential, um, sorry, the reason he left, um, some are asking, people are asking, is it health concerns? Um, his campaign spokesman has reacted. In fact, they, uh, they've given a reason why he left the rally early. Um, the director of media and publicity, Bayo Nanugan, that's of the APC, PCC, he said that uh, he was not rushed off stage due to health reasons or health concerns at his rally. Um, but what he's saying is that uh, uh, the cheering crowd was unprecedented, blah, blah, blah. Tinubu, who held another successful rally in Kaduna on Tuesday, arrived in Mina. Uh, in the evening of the same day for, for a series of meetings with APC leaders, the crowd was so huge that Tinubu spoke briefly to appreciate the supporters and identified the party candidates seeking elective positions. Uh, he says, contrary to the rumors that he was rushed off stage because of health concerns, Tinubu cut it short to attend to other programs of the day. Um, so, so I don't know if you've seen the videos, but what are your thoughts on that? Because everybody has been talking about it, you know, and asking and, you know, putting conspiracy theories out there. You see, um, there's something absolutely fundamentally wrong with us as Nigerians. You know, somebody took it spiritual and that thousands and thousands of people have been brought into the country to, to be chanting and casting spell on Nigerians to the end that even a rational person cannot think rationally. For where we are today, with all due respect, I think that the choice of Mr. Tinubu as our next uh, president by some people leaves me uh, very confused, to say the least. And there are one, two, three situations that we are in as a country. Number one is that the poverty level is unprecedented. Number two is that things are not working right. Corruption is uh, at the highest possible level. And one would expect that we'll actually sit down and irrespective of where people come from, look at a very, very, um, uh, what's the word, rigorous profiling process just like they did for our sister Okonjo Iweala to become the WTO DG. Because the DG of this Nigeria project has a lot up his sleeves. And I find it difficult to understand that Tinubu is the most fit in this country. I mean, even in normal times, even he himself knows that the, 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 what's the word? That we are normal human beings. I'm just trying to be as honest as I possibly can. I have very, very close friends that are extremely close to him. But at this point, I want to think national interest. Uh, our party has no presidential candidate as we speak because our presidential candidate was um, expelled. So I'm, I'm speaking dispassionately not to benefit my, 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 my principal, so to speak. But I just think that Nigerians should, Mr. Tinubu has every right to contest. It is his fundamental right. I don't have any problem with it. But those who are pushing every candidate should check their, their, their heart. They should search their conscience and ask themselves if they are being patriotic, if they are doing whatever they are doing out of pecuniary interest because they believe this man has so much money, let's go and collect this money, or they really honestly, sincerely believe that this is the most suited person. Even when I look at people like Atiku, he sounds very articulate and all those things, but I'm asking myself, is he really the best for times like this?
they, they are, okay. you know, it's a, it's a lot of combination. Sorry, we're saying something. No, please go on. We, you froze for a second. Just yeah. a second, so go on. It, it, it's a lot of combination, but we need to... All right. It, architect, if you can hear me, um, we can't hear you over here because you froze again. I think it's due to the network, so uh, we'll try our best uh, to... Okay, I'm, I'm told you back. Architect, sorry about that. Yes. It happens. Maybe it should be well, a campaign oh, promise. <laughs> yes, sorry. A, a, yeah. a, a call came in and then knocked me off. Right, no. The bottom line is that we really need to know what we are up against. We are up against four years of either being grateful to God or four years of regret. And once the person picks the first four years, taking it back from the person becomes more difficult. So this is the best transition time to get the most suited, the best suited for the job of the office of the president. And let's think of the poor. Let's think of the future of this country. Let's for once put our conscience out there and do what we believe in our conscience is in the best interest of this nation. And whatever we choose, we must be willing to live with it. All right. Let's uh, stay with um, the nation newspaper as uh, one of the stories that I uh, was looking for today to see if there will be um, there will be a, uh, what do you call it again a reply was um, the Undukog Baibana um, this day arise group versus uh, Bio Nanuga Adele Aleke APC PCC. Uh, on the other side, and indeed the paper has something, I'm sure you're well aware of the history of uh, this, uh, this drama. I think uh, it's one of the side attractions of the current political uh, uh, season. What are your thoughts on that? Um, yesterday we were treated to uh, a full, I mean, uh, some pages of a statement by uh, Unduka Ogbaigbena, uh, where they said he cleared the air on challenges and challenged the APC uh, PCC officials to present their candidates for debates. And today, the nation has come out with part two of uh, the, the opinion piece by the ge aforementioned gentleman. Again, Obagbina lies without shame and fractures own, own alternate reality. Lots of grave allegations against the um, owner of this day and Arise uh, uh, Media Group. Um, what are your thoughts on, on how this has gone so far? There are two things. The very first thing is that a man comes to me and says, Sir, your tire is going down and you need to rush it to get it fixed before it completely goes down. And I look at him and say, you are a thief. Because you are a thief, get out of my sight. So a lot of people say, look, forget the messenger, consider the message. I think the response of APC, PCC is um, like telling the man, you are a thief. So don't tell us anything. And not that what he is saying is not in the best national interest. We have, um, you know, with all due respect, we have followed, you know, the town hall meetings that um, Arise has been having. And it's very enlightening. It's very, very, it's, it, it's good for the country. People are getting drilled and grilled and people are getting, you know, to have an understanding, like, uh, up close as different from a debate it's something novel something that should be applauded and i really think that you know uh, mr tinubu needs to give us a little more respect he has he has um, a, a, a media house he can say look i have a media house why should i subject myself to another media house and then hype them to make more money notwithstanding the fact that when you want to seek public office, it's no longer what you want. But whoever has asked you to do something, you do it. You know, so they are not telling us why that is a very bad idea. Rather, they are saying, you, you are a very dishonest person. You are, you are not the sort of person to talk to us. So their argument is highlighting who Nduka Obaibena is, and that's not the issue. The issue is why can't your principal get you know up close with us personal or up close and let's let's feel him 
Because this is going to be our leader. If he doesn't want to go to Arise, you have your own TBC. Just let us know that TBC is going to have a, a, a situation where they kind of um, let us know who he is, personal and up close. Oh. The moment that um, they can do this for us, will be willing to take it the way it is. But for now, it's not enough for you to say Nduka Obaibena is a thief. That's really not mine. But I, the thief has told me that the, the house is on fire. So mine is how can I get um, the fire of the house and not um, whether a thief is talking or... Uh, uh, so that's, that's what I think. All right. Uh, we'll leave it at that uh, one. Thank you so much, uh, Isikali Chief Architect, uh, for your time this morning. My pleasure, and what a good time when they pass through before the jet got <laughs> <It's> right. <laughs> you still look uh, clear and uh, quite, quite uh, stashing as always. Uh, please give, give our regards to Madam and uh, see you next week. Sure, we'll same here. All right, all right. Thank you very much. That's Ezekiel took He'll be back next week for more expert analysis on off the press. But let's take a break. Uh, when we come back, we'll be looking at um, the unemployment situation in the country. Nigeria is said to be the third place, pl worst place in the world uh, to be fired, to be out of a job. Why? We'll discuss this in the GFA. Stay with us.